What is going on, guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Batania. And today, we're going to be setting up some pretty explosive mana generation using the Entropinium. So I will admit that that was an absolutely awful joke, but either way, the Entropinium is an absolutely awesome way to generate mana when it comes to Batania. It's actually one of my favorite because it is just so cool. If you guys don't know how it works, the general premise is this flower is going to absorb explosions around it and generate a boatload of mana from each one. So basically the setup we're gonna go over today in the very commonly used one is simply dropping a piece of TNT right Right next to the flower it explodes it absorbs the explosion and you get a boatload of mana and what is better than that you have explosions you have mana you have everything you could possibly need for an awesome setup so i am super excited to go over this today it's going to be a really simple and easy to do one and in the end it should be a lot of fun because well explosions right so everything we need for today's episode is in this chest right here. Feel free to pause the video if you want to make sure you have everything needed to follow along with today's episode, but we should be good to grab out all this stuff and start doing some crafting. Okay, so the crafting is done. We should have everything we need for today's setup, including a little bit of TNT that we manually crafted to put into this to try it out. And all things considered, it's really not that bad. For the amount of mana generation you can get from this setup, it is a very easy one to do. One important thing that I do want to note, though, is really the difficult part of this setup and running this flower is not going to be the actual automation of the flower itself that we're doing today. It's actually going to be the automation of the production of TNT, which I will cover next episode, because if we take a look at the recipe for TNT, obviously everyone knows that, but there are some recipes in Batania that allow you to get all the different materials needed to make TNT. So it is very possible to use a bit of mana, way less than you will generate using this setup to automatically craft an infinite amount of TNT. So we'll be going over that next episode, but that's really going to be the gating factor behind how fast you can run this setup. And I'd be very impressed if you actually run into the limit that this setup has for how fast it can run. That being said, we should be good to get into this and start setting it up. So the first thing we're gonna do is place down our dispenser and we're gonna wanna put this down right at the center of where our setup's going to go and we're going to want it to be facing towards the ground. So I'm just gonna build up here so that we can properly orient it and then we're going to place it so that it is facing down right here one block off the ground. So the TNT is eventually going to be placed down right there. And this is going to be the entire basis for our setup. We're going to have a timer hooked up to this that places it at specific intervals. And then we're going to have the mana transfer set up for the flower itself. So now that we have the dispenser set up, the next step is to set up the mana transfer, which will pull the mana from the entropinium and store it in a mana pool. So we're gonna put a mana pool down right here and an elven mana spreader directly next to the block below the dispenser where the TNT is gonna be dropped. If you're not familiar with elven mana spreaders, it's pretty simple. They're just a better version of a mana spreader, allowing you to have faster and larger bursts of mana fired from this, which is exactly what we want because this setup has two limiting factors. The first one is going to be obviously the rate at which you can produce TNT. The second one though is going to be how fast you can ignite the TNT and have it explode without blowing this setup up. 
and that's going to be totally determined by the rate at which you transfer mana from the Entropinium to a mana pool or wherever you're planning on sending it. The reason being, the Entropinium itself does not have an actual cooldown, like the Munch do, if you think of, for example. That has like an 80 second cooldown or something before it can eat more leaves. The Entropinium can continuously accept explosions, it can absorb them, generate mana, but if it doesn't have room for that mana, it's not going to absorb them. So you need to make sure you're transferring the mana out using some form of mana spreader as quickly as you possibly can to allow for another explosion to be able to be absorbed. So basically, the faster you transfer mana out, the faster your timer can go that's going to cause this dispenser to ignite TNT and thus have the entire system run. Now, the Elven Mana Spreader is not the highest tier of Mana Spreader. There is one above it, the Gaia Mana Spreader, but that's going to be a little bit difficult for us to get our hands on right now. So we're just going to go with this. We're going to have it directly next to the Mana Pool because again, and I see this messed up in a lot of setups that use this, there is travel time with Mana. So when you fire a burst of Mana, as we've discussed before, it needs to actually physically go from the Mana Spreader to the mana pool, it's not like power and wires and a lot of other mods where it's instantaneously transferred over a long distance. These are bursts that travel and it might take, if it's a couple blocks away, a second or two before it gets there. And the next burst of mana cannot fire off until the previous burst of mana has gotten to the mana pool. So getting it there as quickly as possible is really important. And the best way to do that starting out is to just have the mana pool directly next to the elven mana spreader. The other thing that we can do is put a composite mana lens of potency and velocity on the mana spreader. This will allow it to transfer mana faster because it's going to both have faster moving bursts of mana and also move more mana per burst. So we slap this on there, having them directly adjacent and having the elven mana spreader as our version of the mana spreader is basically going to get this thing to move mana as quickly as it possibly can. And that will allow us to have TNT being ignited and exploding also as fast as we possibly can. So then the only thing we need to worry about is supplying as much TNT to this thing as we possibly can. So <laughs> there's a lot that you can do with this where you're trying to kind of maximize the amount of mana you get from it. And you can get some crazy amounts if you're able to actually supply this with sufficient TNT. So we're just gonna point the Elven Mana Spreader right at the mana pool, and we should be good to move on to the next portion of this setup. So the next step is going to be placing down the Entropinium, and I'm just gonna put this directly over the Mana Spreader right here. I think it looks nicest there, but as you can see from our Mana Seer's monocle, there is a huge range that it can accept explosions from. So you got plenty of room to work with. You don't need to cram it right in here if you don't want to. I'm just choosing to do that because again, I like to make the setups compact and I think it looks nicest. So we just want to make sure that this is bound to the correct mana spreader so that it's all good right there and that should be good to go. The next thing we're going to do is put down a fail safe and this is extremely important for this setup because there will come a time when we have a timer running and we have a stop switch for this where you will need to make sure that you have a fail safe in place and the one that I like the most is just putting a block of obsidian directly below the dispenser so when TNT is dispensed and it explodes, if the Entropinium can absorb the explosion, it does. If the Entropinium cannot absorb the explosion, because it's technically inside a block of obsidian, it is not going to destroy anything. I believe, and I haven't tested this out, but from what I've seen, another viable option should be putting down just a second Entropinium, so that if the first one cannot accept the explosion, the second one will, and then you won't lose out on mana too, but the Entropinium is a little bit annoying to make compared to Obsidian, so I just prefer the Obsidian. It's a nice, clean solution, and I guess it, you know, it adds a little bit extra color to this setup. It adds a nice flair to it. But either way, that is going to be the fail safe. Definitely make sure you have one of those and you will never risk blowing up any of this stuff since this is a little bit of a nerve wracking setup to make since you're actually just potentially destroying some pretty valuable stuff here if you don't do something right. And this prevents that altogether. 
Now, the next thing that we're going to be doing is setting up the first stage of the timer system. So we have two different systems that are going to go in here. The first one being when everything's hunky dory, how are we going to dispense the TNT at proper intervals? And it's really simple. We're using the hovering hourglass and we are going to just put four sand right in here. And that is the perfect timing for having this setup right here to maximize the manage generation, assuming you're supplying TNT to this in sufficient quantities. So obviously, if there's no TNT in there, you're not going to get it going off every four seconds. But I believe it's probably about 3.5 seconds is the ideal time that you can blow up when all the man is out of the entropinium. But because we can't do it in fractions of a second, we're going with four. If you go with three, you're going to run into this fail safe happening a lot more than you need it to, and you'll waste mana. So setting it to four or anything higher should be good for you. And the next thing we need to do is make it so that when this mana pool is full, this setup stops. And this is extremely critical because very similar to the mechanism setup, if you've played with that mod, if you ended up having backups of power, then other things would stop running, then other things would stop running, and then stuff would explode. And this is basically the same thing. If this mana pool fills up, this mana spreader will no longer transfer mana, the entropinium will fill up, and boom, this thing is not going to be able to dispense TNT that will be absorbed, it's just going to keep dispensing TNT that will explode and you'll get nothing. Now that's again why we have the fail safe in here just to be sure, but then you're wasting a ton of TNT. So we want to shut this thing off whenever this mana pool is essentially full. And the way we're going to do that is using a comparator setup. So we're going to put a comparator down right here coming out of the mana pool. Then we're going to grab some redstone, a lever, a repeater, and some building blocks. And the first thing we're going to do is two redstone right here put down a lever and flick it on. That's gonna go into the side of the comparator. And then we're going to put down two blocks right here, a redstone repeater into the dispenser, and then some dust coming down here. So basically what this is going to do is you are not going to get any signal out of this comparator because of this 14 strength one going into the side right here until it's at 14 or above. And that's going to happen when this mana pool is roughly 90 to 95% full. So what that's going to do is basically get to 95% full. This flicks on that triggers this dispenser one additional time, but then it keeps a continuous signal going in here until the mana pool is emptied and there's sufficient room for more mana. And because there is a continuous signal going into this dispenser, this hovering hourglass is going to have its signal overridden because until this signal goes away, no new signal is going to be able to trigger this. So that's going to make the setup stop running. So you're not going to waste any TNT. The one thing I will say is this is not perfect because with some iterations of the timing, and it's not always going to be like this, but occasionally when this mana pool gets to 90, 95% full, this triggers on this redstone repeater sending the signal into the dispenser is going to cause another block of TNT to drop a little bit sooner than it should, thus causing that second block that drops to not be absorbed by the entropinium because it won't have taken all the mana out because it's not going to be perfectly synced with this hovering hourglass right here. So unfortunately, if this ever gets full, you're going to miss out on like one piece of TNT's mana generation, but it's going to take over a hundred pieces of TNT to fill up a mana pool. So in the grand scheme of things, it's really not that big of an issue. But if you want to make this a lot more complicated, there are ways around that. This is just a very simple way to avoid it. And just making sure you have a fail safe in there of whatever kind you want will prevent it from being an issue. And that's pretty much the setup. So if we want to test this out, we can just drop some TNT in there. I manually crafted 32. I thought I had stuff for a lot more, but I guess not because it's a little bit of a pain to go out and get all the gravel that you need to then get all the flint that you need and all that stuff. So I guess I only got enough for 32, but either way, we'll put this in there. We can see it drops. This is so nerve wracking when you run this, but there we go. Mana coming in. Next one is being dropped. We can see that it explodes and we can watch that right when this finishes, we have about half a second, maybe close to one second before the next one blows up. And you can see it's making a pretty sizable, uh, you know, impact on how full the mana pool is. The exact numbers are 6,500 mana per block of TNT that explodes. And I believe if we talk about the mana needed to produce a thing of TNT, just the raw materials takes about 1,200. 
Now, when we end up setting up the thing next episode, there is going to be mana expended to break some of these blocks and stuff like that, which is not included in that, but converting cobblestone into sand will take 50 per piece and converting gunpowder or flint into gunpowder takes 200 per piece. So you've got five and four, 1200 for the conversions themselves, and then whatever mana it's going to require to do the collection, harvesting, all that stuff, but you can still see that there should be a huge net gain of mana from this. And I believe that didn't used to be the case. So a lot of people who might have preconceived notions about the Entropinium before you could not do this, but now the mana numbers have been altered so that it is possible to produce it just using Batania and vanilla stuff and still get a net positive mana generation. One last thing to touch on, and this is in case you haven't read the Lexica Batania on this, but duped TNT does not work anymore. It used to work, but they found a workaround by basically checking to see if the TNT was being created around any slime blocks, pistons, anything like that. And if you do, it's going to only give you one mana. So they are trying to avoid people duping TNT. So definitely don't go for that setup. It's not going to work anymore. Just a heads up so you don't waste time making it. Definitely go for the legit setup that we'll be going over next episode. But hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. I'm going to try not ramble anymore and let you guys go. But if you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on a future one. As I have new episodes coming out every Monday and Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I will talk to you guys later.